Good afternoon. This is Michael O'Neill from the Informed Medical Options Party, coming to you here from Port Macquarie, and I'm here today with um, grandmother Phyllis, and uh, she is a proud Dungaddy woman. And the member, uh, Dungaddy elder woman, and I'm concerned uh, what's the health been doing to my grandson. Um, he's been tested for COVID mm. and he's been tested about eight times for COVID and not once has he come through as positive. He's always been negative. And they put him over here and put in isolation and he'd done his 14 days. And, when, and uh, because they moved him from one room to another, he had to stay another 14 days and that done his head in. Yeah. And uh, you know, he was all ready to come out with the one who had the COVID. Yep. And she's released now and um, he's done his head in and they took him up to up to the Port Base Hospital and they kept him in there for a while and then they sent him back here to the motel again. And then um, they kept messing with his mind, telling him he's ready to come home in such and such a day. That's right. And um, what happened was he was so frustrated that he he jumped off, he said, jumped off the third floor and he's up, up there in the base hospital again. Mm. And what happened was they, t they was telling him that he, he was going to come home tomorrow. And yeah. what happened was they let him down again, and um, that's why he ran. He escaped on his crutches. He's got a bro from jumping from the third story up here. He fra he broke his um, ankle severely. Mm. I would just like to show people where we're we're actually right here at the offending motel where the quote quarantine is happening. There it is. There, and if you can look there in the distance, you will see at the high part there are three floors um the young man because he was in such fear and desperation he ran this motel looks all lovely on the outside south pacific apartments here in port macquarie it's now being used by a police um quarantine facility it, i might add auntie that the uh, the he was tested eight times, eight times. every time negative he never had a positive test in all the weeks and weeks they've been holding him, and yet they just extended. Eight tests, eight negatives, and they deemed he was a risk to public health. They had to keep him in 14 days, then another 14 days. It just has been going on. It's just continually and continuing. It's doing his head in. And uh, that boy is through, has been through a, a trauma, a lot of traumas in his life, and they're not considering what he's been through. And I can understand if he had it, but he hasn't. So why, why are they keeping him in another 14 days and he's got to go to court, they're charging him to go to court tomorrow, which I'll press more charges on him for what? Because he's had enough. Enough is enough. Can't people help? Yes. Yeah, yeah it's terrible, Auntie. Now, we, Auntie and I, we're very old friends, aren't we? Yeah. We've been, we've, how long do you think we've been friends, Auntie? 40, 45 years? Yeah, you you was only a young fellow when I met you. Yeah. yeah and we've been friends all them years, and, and Mick's been a really good friend to our family, and he's just here to try to see that justice is done, is what the health is, health law is doing, they're harming our young people. Mm. Instead of helping them and getting them help and talking to them and, taking them out of the situation where it's going to harm them they're not no. they're doing doing them injustice why can't yes. they help them um myself and auntie we've just been to the police station we wanted to talk to the police about this situation to see if we could get some sort of rational dialogue happening but the default position is always we just obey the public health orders and we mm. and we said you know like we can solve this like this is ridiculous this Every test is continually, continually negative. They, they said, we are victim as much as you are of the public health order. So we're now having the whole country run by, by bureaucrats, by public servants who make these decisions. It's unbelievable. And, and of course, 
this is just one example. How many more of young Cray who attempted, um, he could well have been could attending have... a funeral now, isn't that right, Auntie? Yes. We, I could have been attending his funeral the way he jumped and the way he was victimised. He was held down and needled three times with the police holding him down, breaking into the room and needling him. That's when he went to the hospital. And then they sent him back to the same place where it went to his head again and he jumped from there. And today the police come to my granddaughter's place and they rang the health authorities and they um, said, that I could take him home and quarantine him at home where he'd be safe, he'd be in a safe place with me. And that was all ready to go. And and then they come back and said, I'm sorry, you can't do that. You, you broke the law. You got to, he's got to go before court and get fined or challenged or something's going to happen to him. They're punishing him again. Yeah. It seems like a never ending merry-go-round that just goes round and round. And um, we, we're quite, I'm, I'm quite distressed about it. And uh, I particularly have taken an interest in this because I, I mean, I love my auntie here and the whole family. We're very close. And uh, it would have been a perfect situation to go and just quarantine there with. But here it is. No, no, that cannot happen. No, we're off. Um, now he's going to be on more charges. How, how, what a waste of our country. What a and waste of our money. resources. Yeah. And, and the money and the distress that it, I... It's putting the family... It's the stress they put my family through. If they would only consider in the first place and say he can come armed, the police, like they do here, come and check every day, they could have came out there and done that. Mm. Every day, at least he would have... His mind would have been at ease and he, at ease, mm. and he would have been... He wouldn't have done what he's done. He's, 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 he don't know what he's doing half the time yeah. because he's so spaced out. Yeah. I mean, stuck in quarantine for 14 days and another 14 days after, and who knows, another 14 days after, who knows what they're going to yeah. do with us, with him. And to, so far, I think it's more than eight, eight tests every negative. He's never had a positive test. Mm. Not one positive test. <sighs> Anyway, Auntie, I think we've said enough. We've we've yeah. got the message across. Um, all I, it, mm, sorry, love. And I just hope, with the bottom of my heart, that someone out there can help help my grandson because he's in dire strait. He needs help instead of being locked away. He needs help, mm. and I hope and pray someone out there can help him yeah. before anything happens. Until you know, he's only a young man, and. There's life before him. What you got when he's thinking there's no hope? Yes, I know. While I, while I was waiting for you, Auntie, I spoke to that other um, Aboriginal lady and she told me she's losing her eyesight since she had the COVID vax. Is yeah. that correct? Yeah, her name is... Uh, she's had um, the first shot, it done her arm in, and the second one, she's seeing double in her eyesight. And that's what... And she's an elder, elderly lady as well. Yeah. So... It's, I don't um, know what's it, we've turned happen. the clock back, you know, mm. Aboriginal land rights, care and compassion. I, <clears throat> next time we have Sorry Day, don't you dare, don't, if, you, if you agree with these draconian laws and what's happening to our people, don't you dare attend Sorry Day. There's, there's no sorry there. Like, it's all very well to be sorry for things in the past, but let's take, let's take control of the present and, and bring some things, mm. some rational uh, debate back into it. So, um, I'm going to sign out now and, uh, okay, um, uh, yeah, you, um, any parting words of wisdom? Yeah, I, I just don't want this to happen to other people, you know, uh, what they've done and put our family through, what affected my grandson affects us, it goes right through the family. Yeah. And if I can help other people out there struggling to stand up to this and to, you know, to bring some justice to us and help us. And if we can help others, I just hope we can. Yeah, good. Thank you very much. Mm. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful day. And uh, signing out here from Marty Phyllis and myself. Thank you.